Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated on providing you the how-tos of marketing and networking strategies. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Networking with Michelle. I have a feeling today I may be pushing some buttons. I'm going to address a hot topic that's been floating around and a lot of people have been talking about on why your friends don't support your business. And I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to share with you my experiences, my thoughts, and I know I'm going to contradict myself today. So just, just get ready for that. I'm going to put that out there. But more importantly, I want to take it up a notch and tell you two, maybe three things you can do on how you can support your friend's business, right? Everyone's telling you why your friends are not supporting you, but I'm going to show you how. And if you listen to me, if you follow me, I tell you the value is in the how, all right? So I'm going to go back a little bit. A couple of weeks ago on Facebook, if you're not friends with me on Facebook, feel free to connect. On September 26th, I reposted this image on Inst- well, from Instagram, but I just posted it on Facebook. And I it, the image says, Beyonce plus album equals you buy. Kanye plus sneakers equals you buy. Your friend plus art equals you don't support. Your friend plus business equals you don't support. Why? With the googly eyes. Well, maybe they're not googly eyes, but you know, the eyes. I love those eyes. So I posted that. My caption says, I just had this conversation with my mentor. Value is perceived. I guess people would rather collect memories instead of applicable strategies and tactics to move their business forward. Don't get me wrong. You can do both. Just don't question my pricing or ask for free services. I know for a fact Ticketmaster ain't negotiating and Kanye ain't rapping for a raw four. All right. So a couple of people, comments. Let me back up. I got 21 likes. I got quite a few comments that we had some pretty good dialogue on this one. A couple of two people agreed with me. Excuse me. They agree with me in the sense that they support local business, small business owners. Uh, One person said that, well, your branding and marketing is not right. Your friends are not your target audience. Uh, This one gentleman said, uh, let's see here. Beyonce knows how to sell. Kanye, great salesman. Your friends art? Do you even buy art? Maybe wrong market. Your friend plus business, do they know how to sell? One person said, no one wants to support people that are actually in their reach. And I agree with that. I want to talk about that later. Uh, One thing I've stated, one comment I made, I said, do you give free advice to someone that doesn't understand business? I'm not opposed to helping true, relevant friends on their projects. With the help of my podcast, videos, and blogs, I have found the balance to turn people down by redirecting them to my content. Friends are definitely not the market. However, friends will approach you because you are the closest person to the knowledge they need. Jonathan Sprinkle states that when someone asks you to pick your brain, they're saying you are good enough to ask, but not good enough to pay. Okay, so I think that's about it. So once again, that was my Facebook um, post and dialogue on September 26th. I'm going to try to find a way to add that in the show notes. Yeah, I don't know if I want to put people out like that. But I'll, I'll try to do something with that on the show notes. And like I said, I, I, I know I'm going to contradict myself on this on so many things. Um The first thing, I do think your friends are your target audience, okay? On the surface, I do think your friends are your target audience. And this is what I know, what I've experienced. Look, if we go back 
when we were in college, it was a lot easier to meet people, right? But most of the people that you met in college were on campus. They were in college. Um, your campus, the school across the street, the school on the other side of town, in the next city, you met other people, young people that were in college. Your friend, when you grow up, most of your friends are people that you work with. You spend eight hours a day with them. After that, you go to happy hour. You hang out. I do believe as you get older, it does become harder to meet people, especially if you're not as active. I mean, I know people were in our 30s and we're just not as active as we were in college. But this is the thing. I have noticed as I've gone, as I've left corporate America and pursued this business, I have a lot of friends that are in business. Because regardless of all of my changes and my transitions, I continue to surround myself with like-minded people, other business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders. Okay. So yes, there is a nice percentage of my friends that are my target audience. Now they might not be my ideal client. And that's when we get into the strong details of demographics, psychographics, your ideal avatar. I don't know. They're, they're probably not that, right? But, and this makes it hard because when you're creating products and services and courses and books, I know from the way I create those things that because my friends are part of my target audience, they could benefit from it. Like they could benefit. From my, maybe I'm getting lucky because I focus on networking and social media marketing, but they could benefit from my material. Okay. And what I'm realizing is I have, I have a lot of friends, business owners, marketers, video, um, video marketers or YouTubers, social media experts, bloggers, um, authors, people that write, um, create courses. So there's a lot of overlap in what we do. And I hate to say this, but a lot of the Facebook groups that I, I'm in, I'm not active because I see it's marketers selling to marketers. All right. I don't know what that's about, but it's marketers selling to marketers. Now, I don't think that's the case for me. Right. And that's not even the case for the majority of my friends that I see on the surface. But I can say that if you're an entrepreneur and you and a leader and you believe in surrounding yourself with like minded people, you're going to be surrounded by other entrepreneurs and leaders. So on the surface, they're your target audience, but maybe not the ideal client when we get to the nitty gritty. And there's a catch 22 with that because. You can put that person down on paper, but if they're not making that type of income or revenue that you want people to work with, they're no longer your ideal client. So think about that. Two, social media has ruined everything. And the reason why social media has ruined everything is because they're free channels. They're free platforms. Before, if you wanted to advertise, market, public relations, whatever you want to call it, to your target audience, you knew what to, you knew if I paid for this ad in Ebony Magazine, you knew and still know the audience that's going to pick up that Ebony Magazine and possibly the chances of them to see your ad. The same if, if it was Entrepreneur Magazine. The same if it's Houston Chronicle, right? And the thing with social media is this free platform where we have the liberty to connect with any and everybody, whether it's our family or friends in our backyard or other people that we've met through a mastermind group or a Facebook group. And they're in London, Italy, Spain, Australia. And what happens is that some people, they try to connect with as many people, max out their 5,000 on their personal profile and try to get to 1,000 on their business page because the more people I have to like me and my page, the more likely they're going to see the things that I'm 
selling. I'm not even going to say creating, selling, right? And you feel that the more people I have, you know, maybe I don't need to pay Facebook to do this ad to figure out who my demographic is, to figure out my audience. So I think social media has hurt us as a society, business owners, really, when it comes to marketing and promoting your business. So that's one. So that's the second thing. I think the hardest thing for me when I saw this um, this meme of Beyonce plus album equals you buy, your friend plus R equals you don't buy, you don't support. Now, I've made a I made a lot of sacrifices when I started my business. I knew before I quit my job, Michelle, there's going to be no more trips, uh, no more vacations, no more concerts. I was going to have to forego a lot of leisures. I'm okay with that. Now, one thing that I've experienced and I've I've been struggling with, I've had numerous people come to me and be like, hey, Michelle, um, I need marketing help, marketing advice. I've had some people say, Michelle, I know I need to talk to you about marketing and networking. And as soon as I provide them with my fee, the end. Don't hear from them again. Oh, that's expensive. Whatever the case may be. And so that's one thing. But then they turn around, they post something about how much they spent on something. Like, and usually it's, I'm a female, so it's usually it's clothes. Obviously, you know, I'm a female, but (laughs) usually it's clothes. Um, Of course, Beyonce concert tickets, all these other things. And it's just like, you just said my prices were too much. And there's a lot that can go into that, right? Who's to say that they bought the ticket? It could be a treat. It could be a date. Um, So, you know, I, I can't say, I can't control that, right? And as my mentor stated, values perceived. You know for sure what you're going to get when you go to a Beyonce concert. You're going to have, I've never been to one, but you're going to have a good time. You're going to sing along. You're you're in great company with your friends, with your date. It's, it's a great experience. Beyonce is a performer. I cannot deny that or take anything from her. Now, if you come to me and you want some marketing advice, The problem is I can tell you everything you need to do from A to Z. It could be valuable information, but it might not be worth $100, $500 if you don't execute on it. So that's the problem because it's like, I'm going to pay Michelle $100. I have no idea what she's going to tell me. Two, I may already know this stuff. Three, do I want to act on this stuff? Do I want to execute the things that she tells me? Mm, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. So I think that's where the problem is when it comes to, especially when it comes to services on um, supporting, on your friends supporting you or just people in general trying to support your business. Now, products that can be a little bit different. Um, I really do think it varies on the type of product, the benefit of the product. I mean, some of these um, black owned business page, Facebook groups and all this kind of stuff. This one lady posted where she she says she sells her handbags for sixty five dollars. And I think with her, she's at these mom and pop up shops or not mom and pop, but pop up shops or um, I don't want to say like a flea market. But the thing is, if I'm just going there randomly, spending my Saturday very leisurely. I'm probably not thinking about spending $65 on a purse or $65 on a mirror. To me, that's a lot of money, right? That's something I have to plan and con- be conscious, but like, hey, I'm looking for a mirror, a specific mirror in my new apartment, and I have a $110 budget. So if you have a product, you have to think about that. Think about your positioning and the best way to get that out to people. All right, I feel like I'm just going, going, going. A few more things here. Um, I truly do believe that when you're like on the grind, uphill climb, on the grind, you're doing your thing. People see you. People see you. Trust me. I feel like I get a lot of compliments on my brand, uh, the way I, uh, my logos, um, my colors, podcasts, um, 
Facebook, all that kind of stuff. I get a lot of compliments, random compliments. Like, hey, Michelle, I see you. You're doing it. Keep up the good work. And thank you. I really appreciate that because I get those messages at the right time. At the same time, I think when you're in reach, within reach, like, oh, that's Michelle. Okay, whatever. It's like, yeah, I see you, but I don't see you, right? But I've seen this happen because I used to do a lot of stuff in the entertainment industry, in the music industry. When you are doing show to show or your radio station and hanging out, passing out CDs, it's like, okay, whatever. But as soon as you get that song on the radio or you get that one major performance, everyone's hitting you up for tickets. Everyone, I've seen it happen in the music industry, and I think it's the same across the board. Whatever your industry is, I see it happen all the time. I don't know why, but it's like all of a sudden people want to claim you. Oh, that's my school. We went to the school together in the fourth grade. What? Like, what? I don't even remember anything in the fourth grade. How How you remember? I don't know. But <laughs> And I believe within, when you're within reach, people... It's, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if we're too busy and we're just going on with our life. But as soon as you reach influential status, local celebrity, major celebrity, highlight reel, whatever you want to call it, everyone wants to claim you. I don't know why that is. But I think if you're in business, you just have to get used to it. You have to wrap that around your head somehow and get used to it. Because as long as you stay on this path and this grind and you're making forward progress, it's going to happen to you. But I want to encourage you, if you are a friend and maybe you're not a business owner or maybe, and I have to check myself on this, you know, sometimes I think I promote myself too much, too much self-promotion. There is two, maybe three things you can do to support your friend in their business. It's very simple. And this is not about, you know, taking out $100 and buying a product or $100 and paying for the consultation. Everyone doesn't need my consultation. I get it. Everyone doesn't need my book. I get it. There's a lot more people that are way better networkers than me. There's a lot more people that are way better speakers than me. I just do my thing well, okay? But you can do these two things without spending a dime. I said it earlier. The first thing is social media. Social media is a free platform. It's a free platform. And we're all guilty of this. I try not to share too many videos. Um, I just... I'm just kind of anal when it comes to Facebook and my timelines and stuff like that. But if you know your friend is promoting a specific event, um, uh, some type of launch, a book launch or something, and this product or service falls in line with how you represent yourself on Facebook, what's wrong with sharing their post? Even if you do it one time, because with the share, it increases. If you share my post, if you share my podcast on Monday, it increases my visibility, right? I have a thousand friends. And if you have a thousand friends and you share that, that just increases my reach. Now, you know, Facebook got their algorithms and they want to jack stuff up. But I'm appreciative of that because... Now, yes, we have a lot of mutual friends, but one, it's there's some validation. Like, oh, Michelle, she, okay. Well, she must have said something pretty good if, you know, such and such is going to share it. Oh, wait, I've been looking for a podcast on about, you know, creating marketing strategies. Let me check this out. And then your friend reaches out to you and be like, hey, you know, what's up with this podcast? If you just took, I'll say one minute to share your friend's Facebook post on a product or service that they're promoting, and even even if you don't know what it's about, if you just say, hey, my friend, hey, my friend Shamika from Escaping Cubicle Captivity is um, 
releasing her course on October 28th. If you're looking to find ways to um, monetize your content and learn how to sell um, T-shirts and other products, check this out, right? You can just copy and paste what she put. You can just say, hey, check out my friend Shamika, right? Because the picture is going to be there. The caption is going to be on the bottom. If we just take a minute to share a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, that can go a long way for someone, for our friend. And I think we underestimate that because I, I know some of my people, they be sharing ratchet stuff. I got to block them. But if your friend is sharing something of substance, of quality, of value, and you know you have one or two other friends that are looking to do something along the similar path, why not? And even with the social sharing, even if you don't share something specifically, um, if you know someone, well, I guess this kind of goes into number two, a referral. Okay. So this can, we'll talk about the online aspect in a minute. Um, shout out to my good friend, uh, Crystal Rivers, and I'm recording this on her birthday. Um, earlier this week, someone was like, hey, I'm listening to, um, excuse me, can someone, um, can someone refer me to some good podcasts to listen to? And she informed this brother about my podcast. So I was like, thank you. Thank you for shouting me out, for referring me. And then I was like, hey, brother, if you need anything, let me know. I'd love to help him in any way possible. You know, so she tagged me because this guy had a question. So that's part of social sharing, but it's also referral. And I think... <coughs> A lot of our friends, once again, they're in business. And if you know your friends in business, like if you know your friends, the queen of video production, that should be the first referral, in my opinion, right? If you know your friend has um, T-shirts down, screen print, graphics, let me say graphic design down to a T, that should be, you should refer that brother, right? You might not have a business or a graphic that you need created, but if you can still referrals, and I'm not saying you got to go look for cold, cold leads, but if someone's talking about graphic design, like, hey, you know, my friend da, 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 does graphic design. Or if someone's struggling and they're like, um, hey, I want to start a business, but I'm afraid of marketing. What can I, you know, any advice or, you know, I'd rather have someone do that with some type of introduction via social media, Facebook messenger, email, um, like, hey, my friend is in this situation. Can you help her out? I'm more likely to sit down and have that conversation versus someone just assuming I'm going to do something for free or whatever the case may be. The last thing. This one's up in the air. I said writing a review, book review, um, company review, or a testimonial. Now, some people are probably like, well, um, I don't have a business, so or I didn't have a business with this person or whatever, so I don't feel comfortable writing a review. So there's a couple of things you can do to get around with that. Um, LinkedIn, you can write a review on there, email, whatever. And yes, you may not have done a formal business consultation or buy a product from your friend, but you can speak on that person's character. Depending on how long you've been friends, you can speak on that person's character. You've seen them in action in some capacity, whether it's a work environment, um, a leadership uh, maybe there is an event and somehow they just stepped up to the plate and took care of things. You can write a review or a testament based on their character. You can. You know, if they have a book review or they have a book coming out, like, hey, do you need any book reviews? You can write one up, two, three sentences, three, four, five sentences. And none of these things cost any money. It just takes time. 
It just takes time. And I, th- I think a lot of my friends and entrepreneurs will be so appreciative if someone just did that because it increases our visibility, um, possibly bring in new business to us with the referrals. It uh, solidifies our branding or extends our branding. And then it can validate us. It validates our business, our character, our values. The book I just wrote. Man, Michelle wrote a good book. Here's a book review on Amazon. Here's a book review in the book, on the back of the book. Here's a recommendation on LinkedIn. So those are three ways you can support your friend as a business owner, support your friend's business without any money, but just a little bit of time. Look, I hope this meant something to you uh, today. Please share it with a friend, right? Please tag me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm willing to connect with anyone and everyone on any platform. You can always shoot me an email, info at michellegomay.com. If you're feeling really bold, 713-298-5851. I believe in you. A personal connection leads to an influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle.